Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez not only misunderstood that study about incompetent accounting at the Pentagon, she used her false info to try and push the disastrous behemoth known as Medicare for All. So should we forgive her for yet another gaffe or be concerned that she's actually in Congress? Joining me now on tonight's party panel, Fox Business Network's Christina Partzinevelos, comedian and head writer of this very fine show, or at least this very show, Jimmy <laughs> Bale is here, like and associate professor of economics at the King's College, Brian Brenberg, Brianomics. Uh, let's dive right into Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, it's sad because there's a real issue here with Pentagon accounting, and yeah. we should be certainly concerned about that. But the fact that she thinks that there's $21 trillion just <laughs> sitting around uh, shows how she has so little understanding. Well, yeah, and you know, everyone's calling this a gaffe. It's only a gaffe when you didn't mean to say what you said. She meant this. She, yeah. This wasn't a gaffe. This was honesty. This is the truth about how she thinks we can pay for all these programs. If you look back at all of her comments, it, there's always some pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, mm -hmm. whether it's the rich mm -hmm. or whether it's now the Pentagon or whoever it is. Wall Street is going to pay for this. That's not how it works. This is actually her economic theory. It's not a mistake. No, it, it, it's not a mistake. She tried to walk it back and say, well, there's no oversight at the Pentagon, but there's so much oversight <laughs> in medicine. It's like, that's not what you're saying. <laughs> no. Jimmy? Uh, this is the danger of electing someone to Congress who ran for class president, you know? She's always <laughs> pie in the sky, we're going to have free pizza on Friday. But she's not dumb to me for tweeting this, she's dumb for pushing Medicare for all, period. Mm -hmm. Because, I, just take a look at the VA, who looks at a, a system where people are dying online to be seen, and says, we should add 300 more million people to this line, it'll well, work out great. One of, oh, and I'm glad you bring that up, because one of the gaps that she made in the past was, mm -hmm. you know, when we look at the cost savings in oh. Medicare for all, we're not even folding in the, the savings on funeral costs, as though the, people are going to stop dying no, if we have government imposed health care. It's not going to work the same here no. as it does in some place like Denmark. Mm -hmm. With uh, a smaller population yeah. and stuff like that and a healthier lifestyle. But let's throw it to a Canadian. Hold on. No, you have to drop the Canadian card. I haven't even said anything yet. And I'm just going to point out the facts. The facts are she just used one report, the nation that put out this uh, statement. She didn't fact check it at all because the, uh, the uh, Pentagon's budget is around $9.2 trillion, and that was from 1998 to 2015. Yes. So clearly cannot pay for that $32 trillion that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. However, what about the fact that this is a bigger issue, that the Pentagon money just goes flying, we never audited well, that's, it. That's the their sad audits. thing, that, that she stepped in it, and now we're talking about the fact that she can't carry on a conversation with herself. However, however with how often has the President of the United States made incorrect uh, numbers in his tweets and, and in, in inaccuracies? It doesn't excuse what he no, did. No, it doesn't, but if said. we can't ha let that pass and then say, oh, should we apologize or excuse her when we let it happen so many times with the President, unfortunately. Okay, but here's the problem. What she is talking about is a system of government and the means of production concentrated within the hands of the government that is responsible for killing 100 million people. Socialism is actually a very deadly venue. It's not something that's coarse. It's not something that is impulsive. It is something that kills people. And that is the absolute ultimate end. And that is why there are a few freedom-loving voices that speak out against this. Not because we don't like her style, but because we know the ultimate conclusion is so wrong and the premises are so flawed that we will not allow anyone like her to engage in that syllogism. Jim? Uh, <laughs> I was going to say all of that, so it's kind of like, what do I do now? Well. Um, but no, to that point, exactly. It's destructive and it's pure emotionalism. And this is not... That's politics but, now, though. But, but it, it's disgusting in how it's corrupting her side because this goes back to... She did the same thing with unemployment where she said, you know, the problem, unemployment's so low because everybody's working two jobs. Yeah. 5% of the population is working two jobs right now. Yeah, no, actually, she was talking about 6 million people yeah. have two jobs. Yeah. 148 million people have one job. Can we just be clear that this is the economics, this is the economics that has captured the imagination of the Democratic Party. This is not the fringe. The party has moved 
in her direction, in Bernie Sanders' direction. If you're looking for ideas from Democrats on the economy, it's this. And at the end of the day, the one thing all of these things have in common is nobody knows how to pay for it, except if it's some imaginary thing, mm -hmm. like this imaginary Pentagon budget. The Wall Street that's tax. What, that's what, that's you 2019. You have a tax on speculation, and it's <laughs> Wall Street that's going to pay for it. Folks, you, you wonder why people are so upset about, are we going to get growth in 2019? This is the economic system idea. Ideology yes. that's moving into the hands of power in Washington. Tell me where the growth is going to come I think the, that. the growth that we're seeing for 2019 is not because of this. We're already seeing signs of slowing growth, and we cannot attribute that to the Democrats uh, taking uh, over uh, the uh, House I'm not at saying all. That. That's, that's not what he's saying. He's is, talking about but deficit talk, the spending. Future, uh, now, yeah, he's talking about deficit spending, which, which is, is incredibly how, how high. How, and where and is it passing now? that on $779 billion and passing right. that on to exactly. future generations. Right. So that's the immoral thing. It has nothing to do with the, the I, House of I Representatives being on that. controlled by Democrats. It's the fact that this unsustainable spending and compounding that with a $3 trillion a year Medicare for All program right. that does but, nothing so wait, you're but sink the economy on Medicare for all, and, and destroy What about the spending that's been happening just over the past year okay, and a half? Okay, maybe one program that costs $3 trillion a year. I don't know any. I will admit that. There you I go, am. Brian. No, I mean, it's not that, look, Republicans have responsibility for the fact that we have deficits, no question about it. But ask yourself, are Democrats in a position do, to do anything different about it? The answer is absolutely not. They're talking about imaginary ways to uh, fund imaginary programs that are not workable. That's a recipe for disaster. Democrats have responsibility to do something positive, to do something responsible. They're going in exactly the opposite direction. Yeah, statism is, uh, it's wrong. It's immoral. And it, it seems, you know what it's like? The bobs from office space. The Democrats <laughs> have brought them in to say, you know, all right, well, uh, let's rethink some things. Like, oh, you know, millennials are so much fun and we want them to vote. And millennials like free stuff, so let's give them free stuff. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's like, but they've become who they are trying to represent, like uh -huh. pie in the sky, like Manhattan teenagers who are just like, ask your dad. Like, that's become <laughs> the Democratic financial platform. Alexandra we'll Ocasio-Cortez, <laughs> when asked how she was going to pay for it, one of her answers was actually, well, just pay for it. <laughs> and that's what you do. You pay for it. Call and they're, they're Democrats who are trying yeah. to unhinge themselves from her wagon. Yeah, the older statesmen in the party, the elder statesmen in the party are trying to draw some separation mm -hmm. between what went on. Even Nancy Pelosi spoke out and said this is not the I think, yeah, the she's party. on the fringe. She uh -huh. is on the fringe. I, I don't think everybody, I don't think everybody, I don't think I don't everybody, don't think everybody agrees with she, her She loves all ideologies. the new blood in Congress because it tastes delicious.